That's not true. It's not your fault. You can't be repentant for something you didn't do. You can only be humble to the feelings that somebody else did it to you and be confused and cry about why they did that, why did they want to do that to you. Because at the end of the day, there was no reason inside of you why that happened. There's no reason inside of you why somebody would revert to damaging you. Right? So you can't be repentant for something that, that somebody else has done. You can only be repentant for something you actually did. And if you've been abused as a child, you can't be repentant for being abused as a child because it wasn't your fault. Somebody else did it to you. All you can do is be humble to the emotion that somebody else did it to you and, and wonder why and, and let yourself feel through those feelings about why they did it. But it wasn't because of you that they did it. They did it for another reason, a selfish reason of their own. Yeah. Matthew? I think it's really hard when you've been told and you've gone with that projection that it was your fault for all of your life. It's only hard because we don't wish to accept God's truth because we know that if we do accept God's truth, we're going to be attacked more. So the only thing that really makes it hard is knowing that yeah. when we accept God's truth, we're going to be attacked more by that person. Does that make sense? That's what makes it hard. And a lot of the time we want the love from that person, don't we? Because Still. we didn't receive it. And so we almost feel needy for their love. But to actually acknowledge the truth means that we're going to distance ourselves. Even they, more. Yeah, they, they're not going to give us anything resembling love until they work through the issue. And this is about being humble to the emotion of feeling like, no matter how much love I want from that person, they're never going to give it to me. And just feeling how bad that feels. Feeling, feeling about why you feel they're never going to give it to you. I hate that. Yeah. 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 And, and if someone doesn't love you, it's not your fault. Thanks. And this is a really important thing to understand from an emotional perspective. If someone doesn't love you, it is not your fault. Because love is a gift. Anybody could give it to anybody else, no matter what they do. If someone chooses to not love you, then it is not your fault that they don't love you. It's something going on within them that causes them to not love you. And, and we need to come to an emotional recognition of that, that it's not our fault that we're not loved. Does that make sense? See, God loves us no matter how bad we get. <laughs> No matter, no matter what we choose to do, God still loves us. No matter what, how, how devious and dark we get with our decisions, God still loves us. And the reason why God still loves us through all of that is because God loves us. And it's immaterial whether what you do as to whether God will continue loving you. You might not feel it. That's a different issue. But the reality is God loves you through all that. If people on earth don't love you through all of that, then it's because they have chosen to not love you. And that's not your fault. That's their choice. They have chosen to not love you. And it's very important to understand that. Yeah. Very important for your emotional processing to understand that, actually. Yeah. Just because you're not loved, it doesn't mean that you're unlovable. It means that somebody chose to not love you. And that was their choice. It's immaterial what you did. It was their choice. You can be as bad as you want or as good as you want. Other people could still choose to love you. God chooses to love you through all of it. And someone who really loves us, loves us no matter how we behave. Yep. So you can't earn the love of a person of someone who really loves you. They already love you. There's nothing you can do to make them love you more because they already love you. They, they, all want, they want to love you. And they want to love you whether you're bad or good. They still want to love you. And there's nothing you can do about that. You can't earn it and you can't make a big mistake that would cause it to stop. God will still love you all through that. 
And the person who loves you on earth will love you through all that. Yeah. And this is, I feel, one of our primary problems is we don't believe that. We, we, we feel that, that we've got to earn the love of others. And that when we make mistakes, we're not going to be loved. That's not the case at all. A person who really wants to love you will love you even if you make a mistake. A person who really wants to love you will love you even if you purposefully do something wrong. They'll still love you because they want to love you. And their love of you is not dependent upon what you do. And that's how we all can learn how to love. Get to that point where we're willing to love other people no matter what they do. No matter what actions they take. Whether Even if they want to kill us, we still love them. Now, if you lived in an environment like that, that would be a pretty powerful environment, wouldn't it? To grow up in and to experience and to enjoy. We wouldn't be worried about shame or any other emotion. Yeah. And perhaps that's a good place to leave our discussion yeah. today. How about that? Just to remind you that if someone really loves you, they will love you no matter what. And God, who really does love you, loves you no matter what mistakes you make, even if you do things on purpose, God still loves you. Even if you do things in avoidance, God still loves you. You might not be able to feel that love while you do those particular things, but God will still love you through all of that. All right? And it's very important to understand that because then you're going to be less afraid about making a mistake. <laughs> you're going to be less afraid about that it's all you, that there's something wrong with you. Like from God's perspective, God created you, the perfect person. The, the highest of God's creations. That's how, what God created. So God loves you because God loves God's own creations. God knows everything about you, knows everything you've done, everything you're going to do, everything that is inside of you, already knows all that. There's nothing you can do to impress God. <laughs> He's already impressed. He's already impressed. <laughs> He's already impressed with his own creation. <laughs> All right? There's nothing you can do to make God disgusted. Because God doesn't feel disgust that, that God gave you the gift of free will to make a choice. God knows that you know, whenever you make a choice that's out of harmony, you love that you'll feel some pain and maybe you'll think about that. But, but God doesn't feel disgusted with you. It's only people that do these things. It's only people that do these things. So if, if we can get to the point where we understand that about God and we also understand that about each other, that a person who loves us doesn't judge us, a person who loves us doesn't, always loves us no matter what we do. And if that's not the case in our recurrent relationships, then we can go, well, wow, I've got no one in my life who really loves me. All right? And we can feel about that and grieve that, but in the end you'll realise that you've got God who really loves you. You've got all of our spirit friends who have been perfected in love, who love you. Your guide who's probably perfected in love, loves you. So there's a lot of people who love you, a lot of them you just can't see. But, but on earth, if we can get to the point where we love other people because we want to, yeah. not because of what they do, but because we want to. And if you're ever with a person who loves you because they want to love you and not because of what you do, you'll find you'll be able to process through your emotions a lot more rapidly than what you can currently believe. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, that was a good uh, discussion, guys. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So um, we're down for a week or so, and uh, so next week on Saturday we're going to have another session if you want to come along, and it will just be another question and answer session as well where we'll just answer questions. So if you didn't get a chance to ask your question today, we'd be happy to answer your questions next week as well. Mm. But thanks for your time today, guys. Thanks, everyone. Yeah.